Seven Principles of Effective Critique in Technical Communications Critique is important, yet improper and ineffective critique in technical communications is worse than no critique at all, since it alienates the receiver, the student, and puts them in a defensive mood. So here are my seven principles of effective critique that uh, I think all instructors and mentors should adhere to. Uh, a quick rundown, a critic should be objective, specific, constructive, comprehensive, acceptable, flexible, and organized. Now, let's go into the details a little bit. Objective. You should limit your critique to the observed behavior of the student and refrain from implying anything about the student as a person or anything about general psychological uh, traits or even worse, physical characteristics. Don't allow your personal feelings color your statements. Be kind, but honest and select your words carefully say what needs to be said with minimum emotions and without hurting the feelings of the other party second specific related to the first one a student cannot understand an error and correct it if you are not specific enough for example it's not enough to say your document is not good because in that case, the student doesn't know where to begin to correct the document. But if you say something like, you should have used a sans serif font for your header one titles. Now that's a lot more helpful critique because you are telling the student what he or she could have done or should have done. Constructive. Now, we live in a world so negative, you know how it is. You turn on the TV and the world affairs, everything is negative, right? So there's no point in being destructive when identifying a mistake. You should not flatter the student for no good reason at all either. But you try to support them by presenting the negative aspects that are issues open to improvement carefully selected phrases and okay euphemisms like uh, there is room for improvement instead of that's awful uh, it goes a long way in this context comprehensive your critique should be balanced and include both good and bad points but it, it should not leave out any imp important facts uh, while prioritizing the solution steps. For example, th there's no point in telling a student that uh, he or she should have come up with a better D DTD if the person does not even know the first thing about XML and structured authoring. So maybe there are prerequisites to a task that you ask them to perform. So try to be as comprehensive and include all the necessary steps as possible to be helpful. Acceptable. The instructor should have the legitimacy, the legitimate authority to make the criticism, the critique. When there are questions about the authority, knowledge or fairness of the instructor, the critique will fall on deaf ears, no matter how qualified and well-intentioned it might be. So. Pay attention uh, to this fact as well. Flexible, an instructor should be able to shape the critique depending on the audience context. For example, in a classroom setting, uh, students may be in a different mood on Monday and yet another mood on Tuesday, etc. So you must be sensitive enough to read the, the mood, the context, and the include such human factors in your critique as well. Organized, a good instructor 
takes the student by the hand and leads her through as few steps as possible to the desired goal of the instruction or the critique session. Breaking a performance failure into smaller parts and focusing on how to improve each part in logical order works well in most situations. So if you pay attention uh, to these seven principles, I think your critique will be a lot more helpful and bring about the desired change in behavior. So good luck to you and see you in the next video. Thank you.